Hello there, this is Chris Jobling from Engineering and I'm going to show you how to set up um, an assignment on Blackboard uh, which you could use for collecting coursework activities. Uh, the advantage being that Blackboard will, will essentially keep the register for you and you helps also with grading. So I, I probably will make two or three uh, of these presentations. This is the first one about getting started and how to set things up which I hope will be useful for you. For this demonstration what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, course, test course that you will have been created when you when you first were given a Blackboard account. You should all have had a course which was called something like uh, my practice module. So I'm going to use that in this demonstration. And before we get down to the business of actually demonstrating the, the, the uh, creating assignment, what I want to do first is actually show you um, a couple of things that you, you will maybe want to do just to, just to set things up for testing purposes. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a... well, first of all I'm going to check that my uh, course module itself has got a name that will enable to find it later. Uh, normally when you, when you have a Blackboard site created for you, your practice module will be called something like My Practice Module. But we're going to add a test student to this site in a minute and uh, you will see that test student has a quite a lot of modules called My Practice Module that it's been assigned to. So to make it a bit easier for you, I'm going to make sure I put. I would suggest you put your name in 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 the name of the of the course so that it'll be easy to find later on. So I'm going to call this CPJ's Practice Module. And the second thing I'm going to do is add a test user so I can log in later as a student to show you what the student will see when he submits an assignment and that assignment has been submitted in terms of what he, what he sees as a receipt. So for that purpose what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to users and go to users and groups and I'm going to add a test user to the system and the easiest way to do that is to click on the find users to enroll box. And there are a number of students that have been set up and one of these is called student one so we just add that student to the system. And you'll see the student is added to the system uh, and we'll use that one later. Okay so having done that we're now ready to show you how to create an assignment and it's very simple you just go to a suitable page. Um, in the test modules there's, there's probably a menu item called Assignments, so you can click on that. If not, then you can create a page called Assignments. And you want to basically create a new assignment here. And you'll find that under the Create Assessment item, providing the Edit mode is turned on. If it isn't, you can easily switch it on like that and just create an assignment. And a Blackboard will then take you through a wizard that allow you to create this, uh, this assignment. You want to give it a title. I'll just call this my test assignment. And you probably also want to give it a description and I, I would recommend that you use this description to make it absolutely clear to your students what your uh, what you're expecting them to do. So I'm going to just copy some text that I've already prepared here and then we'll take you through what I suggest you actually mention in this. So the first thing to do obviously is you need to add instructions to the to your assignment um, and the sort of things I would recommend there are make sure it's very clear about what the students are expected to upload to this. They can upload anything really that's electronic. Blackboard is very flexible in that sense. Um, but if you want a text file or a PDF or a doc, doc or an Excel spreadsheet then make, you should make that clear. Um, I also think it's very useful to to get your students to use a file naming convention because if you, if you eventually download all these submissions uh, and they come down as a big zip file and if the students have named their document my submission or something like that then it's very likely that that might get overwritten by another file. So I, I recommend that you include the name of the course code and, and the student's number 
in the in the submission um, so that it's easy to find them later when you when you download those files for grading um, so make sure you, you, you specify that and the file types that you're expecting them to upload. If you want them to actually enter any information with a submission, for example their student name, student number, discipline, this kind of information, then you can do that as well. Make sure you specify that in the instructions. Uh, there's a place on the submission page, you'll see in a minute, where they can enter that information. And then if you're only going to allow one attempt, then you may need to make sure that you've absolutely made absolutely certain that they know when the submission date is. So the submission deadline needs to be clearly specified. It's also worth perhaps noting the college's zero tolerance policy on late submissions. And for those people who are of genuine uh, reasons for submitting late, uh, remind them how to get a mitigating circumstances form for late submissions. So I usually advise putting all that your academy information into this entry field. It's a good idea to state when they can expect to receive the grade and feedback, I think, um, so that they're not asking you that question. Um, for example, the college policy is that uh, coursework should be marked and returned within two weeks. So it might be worth telling them that at this point. And it's also worth noting that on submission, Blackboard will send them an email acknowledging submission. It's been set up that way. Um, but in order for them to get that, they need to have an empty in inbox. So it's worth telling them also that their college email inbox is not full. Make sure that's, they've checked that. It's also possible use, useful to explain what, what they can expect to see when they're submitted or attempt to resubmit or visit the My Grades part of Blackboard because one of the questions I get asked a lot is, is where is my submission? How do I know I've submitted? Can you confirm that I've, I've submitted? Well, Blackboard will tell them if they've submitted if they know where to look and it provides them with, if you like, a receipt. So it's worth maybe pointing that out to them, although of course they may learn this uh, if enough people use this, this kind of assignment tool in the future. But I will probably make a video uh, showing this from the student's point of view uh, at some point in the future. So that's that's that. Uh, some basic information about what to do. Um, if you have a, a document that explains this already written, then you could use that and attach it instead of, of writing in the text box. And then you probably want to specify a great a pointing scheme, depending on what you want to do. Let's say this this is going to be worth ten points. So you put that in there. That will eventually be used to. Uh, provide a column in the grade center as it's called and then you've got to decide here about w when the assignment is going to be available and how many attempts they get obviously if you click that box then the assignment will not be available until you, until you switch it on um, just a word of warning if you only allow a single attempt and they, and they get it wrong for example they forget to add the attachment or forget to add the, the data that you asked them to enter into the submission form, then they will try again and, they, and Blackboard won't allow them to try again. You can switch that to allow unlimited attempts or specify a number of attempts, um, which is a little bit easier for the students because at least they, they know if they get it wrong the first time they get another chance. The problem from, from your point of view as a grader is that all those attempts will appear as as assignments to be marked, even if some of them weren't valid. That's just a limitation of Blackboard. But I would I would recommend that you allow uh, more than one attempt if you want to be absolutely if you want to avoid any any sort of whinging from the students themselves about failure to submit. Um, availability you can specify when the assignment becomes available on Blackboard. Um, that pr is probably the date where you said the assignment would appear in in the in the assessment calendar that you, you set up for your module. Um, and then you've got the display until, I'll come back to that one, you can also specify a uh, tracking number of views so you can actually see what the students do and how many times they, they visited this submission and who visited and that kind of information if you wish. Now this is a key one, the, the due date, you need to specify the due date, let's say it's going to be the 23rd of November in this case, uh, and I would recommend that you specify a, a time that is in, during working hours. 
The reason for this is because students tend to, students will sub work into the night and they could, you know, you could make it midnight. The problem is that when it comes to submission time, they sort of expect you to be there waiting for their submissions and able to answer emails. So if, they, if they have a sudden panic at half past 11 at night, um, there's, uh, it's, they're not really going to, to get a response from you and it's perhaps more likely that they'll get a response to an urgent email if it's during working hours. So I'd recommend that having a submission date um, during working hours is probably a good idea. It also gets them working on the same calendar that you're working on. Uh, recipients here, this is really where the marks go to. You can set up assignments for groups or individuals. This is basically specifying where the marks go. If you have a, a group assignment, do you want all the students to get an individual mark or do you give the group of students a mark? So that's not really applicable unless you're doing a group submission. So all students individually is okay. And then going back to this availability thing, my recommendation would be to, to make the link of at least available for a week or two weeks after the submission date. Just so that if there are any students who are late for with a genuine reason, they, they they have a chance to uh, you know to redeem that and, and at least it'll give some information about how you you would expect them to submit a submission after the closing date. Blackboard won't allow them to submit after this this time, but at least there'll be a link there with possibly some explanation about how to how to get the, the submission to you if it is late with a genuine reason. If you make the uh, display time the same as the due date, then the link will disappear, as will all the information about how they might redeem a late submission, and and they'll they'll be they'll be stuck then, I'm sending an email asking what can I do now. So it's probably a good idea just to keep the link present so they know what they've missed and how how, how to get around it. Okay, so once you've set all that up, uh, all you do is press the submit button. And Blackboard will go away and think about that, and eventually you'll get back to the assignments page, and you'll see the new link there. There it is. There's a link there. So there's your test assignment. There's the instructions. And if you click on that link, it takes you into um, the instructions and. This is basically what the, the student will see. If you want to change anything as an instructor, what you need to do is right click or drop this, click on this drop down menu and then press edit to go back into the edit page for the assignment and change the, change the specifications. So what I'm going to do now is going to log out and log back in as this test student that I created. And, and you'll see why I na renamed my course in a minute. Uh, the test students, there's, there's several of these, um, they all, student one, student two, student three, etc. They all have the password Blackboard. So now I'm logged in as that test student, and if I go to my studies, slow because I'm working on my own computer at work at home. Uh, there you can see that this, because it's a test student, it's been assigned to all kinds of things, including one or two courses already called my practice course. This is why I renamed my practice course, so that, or personalised it so that I could find it again. So if I go into CPJ's practice module this time, and then I, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how a student would submit an assignment for your coursework. So there's the, t the assignment we've just set up. They click on the link, takes them to this submission page where they can read the instructions and find out the due date and how many points it's going to be worth. And if you've asked them to do, they can put in some basic sort of naming information, such as the student number and the discipline, if that's what you've asked for. And down here you can put, uh, this is my coursework, 
photo and get a good mark which is a sort of message to the to this to you as a supervisor uh, and one thing they mustn't forget of course is to actually attach something so they need to do that using this button here browse my computer and I've got one a file already set up here so I'm going to upload that file which is a word document in this case can what can upload all kinds of files uh, through the system using the system. Uh, at this point they 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 can just submit this and it will go off and appear in the gradebook, grade to grade center, or they can uh, modify their submission. They have time to sort of change things around, adjust the fields, or even to try again with the upload. So they could press this do not attach it would basically allow them to upload a new file. In fact they can upload several files through this interface in the same submission. If they cancel, that basically takes them back to the start with no, no loss. If they save as draft, they can come back and re-edit these fields until... And if it's a, just a one-time submission, then of course that's, that's the submission over. And this is what they submitted, uh, some information plus the submission history given the date and time of submission which is their receipt and you can see the document that they submitted and their comments that they added. Uh, if they uh, want 